Welcome back to Colette Gaming and welcome to The Stanley Parable. Yes, The Stanley Parable. That game. Yeah. So, as requested by one human that bothers me quite often, he told me to play this game. And I have played it. But recently, I got a new computer, and I get to record it. I get to record playing it. So I've played it like once or twice. But this is the first time I am playing it for you guys. So let's get started, and I will shut up at the opening. The end. The end is never. The end is loading. It should load faster. This is the story of a man named Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on a keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor on his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. And although others might have considered it soul-rending, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. And Stanley was happy. And then one day, something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened. This complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. And thus we play. I am Stanley. Although my name is Stephanie, but... Alright, so... As requested by Steve, he told me to buy this game. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. As I was saying. Um He told me to buy this game. And he and told me to play and I should play for on the show. I already played for it a little bit. Um I mean, I already. Okay, there's one achievement where I press this door like multiple times. Do I? Can I do that again? Okay. I guess not. Oh well. Well, this is the wrong door. <laughs> I don't remember. Some one of these doors. I don't remember. And basically, you can listen to the narrator, or do you do what you what you want? When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Okay. Yet there was not a single person here either. Tips for getting Feeling fired. Feeling a wave of disbelief, <laughs> Stanley hey. decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Alrighty. Ooh, here it is. I want to do something for you guys. Alright. 
Stanley stepped into the broom closet, but there was nothing here, so he turned around and got back on track. So... All of duct tape. There was nothing here. No choice to make, no path to follow. Just an empty broom closet. No reason to still be here. It was baffling that Stanley was still just sitting in the broom closet. He wasn't even doing anything. At least if there was something to interact with, he'd be justified in some way. As it is, he's literally just standing there doing sweet F.A. There's duct tape right here. Are you, are you really still in the broom closet? <coughs> standing around doing nothing? Why? Please offer me some explanation here. I'm, I'm genuinely confused. Dante! Dante! You do realize there's no choice or anything in here, right? If I'd said Stanley walked past the broom closet, at least you would have had a reason for exploring it to find out. But it didn't even occur to me because literally this closet is of absolutely no significance to the story whatsoever. I never would have thought to mention it. There's a reason why I'm staying in here for uh, quite a while. Maybe to you this is somehow its own branching path. Maybe when you go talk about this with your friends, you'll say, Oh, did you get the broom closet ending? The broom <laughs> closet ending was my favorite. <laughs> I hope your friends find this concerning. <laughs> Tell that to Steve later on. <laughs> Stanley was fat and ugly and really, really stupid. He probably only got the job because of a family connection. That's how stupid he is. <laughs> that or with drug money. Also, Stanley is addicted to drugs and hookers. <laughs> well, I've come to a very definite conclusion about what's going on right now. You're dead. <laughs> you got to this broom closet, explored it a bit, and were just about to leave because there's nothing here when a physical malady of some sort shut down your central nervous system and you collapsed on the keyboard. <laughs> well, in a situation like this, the responsible thing is to alert someone nearby so as to ensure that your body is taken care of before it begins to decompose. My little brother is in the Hello? Anyone who happens to be nearby, the person at this computer is dead. <laughs> he or she has fallen prey to any number of your countless human physiological vulnerabilities. It's indicative of the long-term sustainability of your species. Please remove their corpse from the area and instruct another human to take their place at the computer, <laughs> making sure they understand basic first-person video game mechanics and filling them in on the history of narrative tropes in video gaming so that the irony and insightful commentary of this game is not lost on them. All right, when you've done that, just step out into the hallway. Uh, my little brother is probably good in first person games. But he's six! Yes, my brother is six, and he's not so bad in video games. Computer games. That's all we have are PCs. Alright, so, when well, we're done staring at duct tape. Ready? Ah, second player. It's good to have you on board. I guarantee you can't do any worse than the person who came before you. Hmm. Can I jump? I can't jump! I got that achievement! Yay! Okay, I'm done. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Upstairs. Nope, that's not it. Is this the bathroom? Executive bathroom. I can't go in. Now, I've actually taken this path before, but... There, I remember there was one part of the path that I did not take, so I'm going to take it. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. 
Shocked, unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this, what dark secret was being held from him. What he could not have known was that the keypad behind the boss's desk guarded the terrible truth that his boss had been keeping from him. And so the boss had assigned it an extra secret pin number, 2845. No, I think... But of course, Stanley couldn't possibly have known this. I know there's an achievement if I do this. Let's see if I can get it. Stanley just sat around twiddling his thumbs. Trying to input anything on the device was useless, since he could never possibly know that the combination was 2845. Eight. Stanley simply began entering random codes into the keypad, knowing full well the sheer statistic 2845. <laughs> Two. Forgot, but it turns out that the panel's emergency override kicked in. And the door just opened oh. all by itself. And Stanley got the hell along with the story. Well, whoop de do. Okay. Well, whoop de fucking do. Okay. Now this is bothering me. Elevator? Elevator. Ah! I'm scared. I'm scared! Descending deeper into the building, Stanley realized he felt a bit peculiar. It was a stirring of emotion in his chest, as though he felt more free to think for himself, to question the nature of his job. Why did he feel this now, when for years it had never occurred to him? This question would not go unanswered for long. I want my mommy. Where am I going? Stanley ah. walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. That way. Although this passageway had the word escape written on it, the truth was that at the end of this hall, Stanley would meet his violent death. Please don't scare me, game. The door behind him was not shut. Stanley still had every opportunity to turn around and get back on track. Shut up, narrator. You're getting me nervous. At this point, Stanley was making a conscious, concerted effort to walk forward and willingly confront his death. Ah! I'm really getting nervous about this. Stanley was inched closer and closer to his demise. It reflected that his life had been of no consequence whatsoever. Stanley can't see the bigger picture. He doesn't know the real story, trapped forever in his narrow vision of what this world is. Perhaps his death was of no great loss, like plucking the eyeballs from a blind man. So he resigned and willingly accepted this violent end to his brief and shallow life. There goes Stanley. No! Ah! The, the, the! Farewell, Stanley, cried the narrator, as Stanley was led helplessly into the enormous metal jaws. In a single visceral instant, Stanley was obliterated as the machine crushed every bone in his body, killing him instantly.
Was that a female narrator? Um. Ah. What do I do now? Um... 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 And yet it would be just a few minutes before Stanley would restart the game back in his office as alive as ever. What exactly did the narrator think he was going to accomplish? How did you turn into a female? When every path you can walk has been created for you long in advance, death becomes meaningless, making life the same. Do you see now? Do you see that Stanley was already dead from the moment he hit start? This is from... this is some existential shit. Um... I still want to know how the narrator became female. Corridor. Pacing of this opening section was important to get right. This corridor has been moved and altered to make sure the player reaches the two doors in a good time. Filing cabinets? Well, no shit. But these are nice pictures. Nature paintings. Oh, pfft. Stanley's computer. Touch you in a bit. Office layout. The blueprint shows the office from the beginning of the game. The path and his office. Is this breaking the fourth wall? Oh yeah. See, that's Stanley's office. <clears throat> My office. Stephanie. Jesus Christ, can't get this shit right. Mhm. Mm you walk this way. Then you walk this way, then you walk this way, and then the two doors. Office computer- Hey, look, it's solitaire! Oh, shit! Oh, well, I turned it off. Credits! Button sounds throughout the- Game one. Huh. The office. I don't want to touch my computer. Where's my computer? I'm kind of creeped out at this ending. Am I even towards the end? What is this? The Stanley Parable Credits. Made using Source by Bell. Huh. Point of the Stanley Parable HD remix is to lose. Huh. Am I? 
am I going crazy? Maybe it isn't the same image. Was that clock there before? I don't remember. How do I go back? Can you check for me? Oh, more endings, fewer endings. More narrated, fewer narrators. More Stanley, less Stanley. War zone. end up on a battlefield fighting aliens the action game would become since it would rage war against the narrator we realized shortly after starting to build it that it was far too jokey and on the nose for the tone of the game plus some people interpret it as making fun of people who like shooters which is not <laughs> right right What is this? Hmm. At this point, I should be pressing start, but I'm like, huh, this is like a mini museum. Oh, that's where I was before. I don't know what the hell I'm doing. Okay. So I have no clue what else I should be doing. Okay. So I'll see you guys later. Yeah. Yeah. I still don't understand how it became from a male to a female narrator. <laughs>